check this out. Um, how massive is that? I'll show you today. Touch designer with stream diffusion and the whole thing with live input. How the whole thing gets installed? Um, yes, implemented. Um, it's actually quite a simple matter. I find it incredibly intense that this is currently working. It's all in real time. It's all live. And the best part is everything runs locally on my computer. Today I'm showing you this. How it does it, um, I'm going back to reality a bit more with this slider here. Uh, my prompt here is totally, well, it's, uh, I think it's super cool. Yes, it's just crazy. I'm always amazed when I turn it on and just see the stuff. Uh, all right, let's go inside. I'll show you how to install it and how you implement it. I think it would be awesome. I have to share it. Uh, have fun. So friends, we've just landed on YouTube again. I became aware of it um, through this video by Dot Simulate, uh, who also created the Tox file for it and has integrated something like Stream Diffusion in Touch Designer. The good gentleman also has a Patreon. That's where you get the file from. He does pretty cool stuff. He even has chats, CDs and such are included. But here you essentially get a stream diffusion. I have the latest version here. I've downloaded that and so if you want to experiment with it, you can't get around being on Patreon at least once. Here you basically get um, the TOX file or the operator for Touch Designer. So, friends, we've now arrived um, in an empty Touch Designer project. And what we're going to do is first go into our downloads. Uh, yes, we look for the downloaded TOX file from dot .simulate. Uh, and as you see, at first nothing happens. That's correct, because you still need to install certain things. Mm. Uh, let's go to install here. And we see this uh, there. Simulate has laid out a little guide. Let's go to piles and take a look at it. Uh, here you have all the installations, essentially. Notes that you might need. The whole thing works. Just to throw out a small disclaimer, only with an NVIDIA card. It only works with Windows 10 and Windows 11. You need to install pipes, you need to install a uh, CUDA, or so you need to install the CUDA toolkit. You must have NDI installed and you need Git install. In principle, the tool does everything for you, but in case, you can of course install it again yourselves. He also provided the links. Uh, I'll include them in my video description as well. Install git here. Naturally, NDI. NDI, yes, I always install it. Uh, install CUDA as a toolkit and Python. Currently, with Python version 13.9, if you've installed all that, it should just work in theory, as I said. The tool does that automatically, but if it doesn't work, you have the links and you can install it yourself. So, but what you still need to do is first create a base folder, as he described here as well. First of all, a base folder for that deposit. I'm doing this now on my desktop, specifically Stream Diffusion, and into this SD folder I throw it. Then he basically just goes through these steps so step run, download stream, diffusion repo, uh, let's do it right away. And then it's already working. The command line opens briefly in the background and then it's moved there. We can press pulse again and update the whole thing. Yes, the CMD popped up in the background again quickly but it was so fast that you couldn't see it. 
So, and then we basically have to install install stream diffusion and then it actually installs all the requirements um, like it sets up a virtual environment and essentially installs all dependencies and the whole shebang everything related to python cuda and and so on if it's needed it installs it let's press pulse here too and now we see that here for sure. First installs the entire environment. So it creates the Python environment. Uh, so basically downloading now all the libraries and everything you need for it and so on. And just builds the whole thing. This takes a bit. So I'll just shut up now and fast forward a bit because it just takes its time. As you can see, it starts to download CUDA here, or what is that? Tire Torch. Well, he's downloading and installing stuff now. friends that somehow took a few minutes so it takes about six to seven minutes now you just have to press any cup um, in my case it's number zero then you can also optionally install tensor we're doing that now too because it'll probably work a bit better with it and then we just press on pulse and then it takes a few minutes again the command line opens again and then TensorT is installed uh, as mentioned. Mm. Yes. And then we'll see each other again in five to six minutes. So, ladies and gentlemen, we now need to press a random key again, and in this case it's the zero for me again. And we've basically got everything installed that we need to install, and accordingly I'll remove the guide here, and then let's see if it all works. So now let's just take a look into the stream settings uh, and just leave everything as it is for now and, and checking if it works. Accordingly, I'm putting in a short noise first. Uh, just gonna drop this here. Say start stream at stream diffusion. We'll leave the prompt default fancy banana in there too. And we say start. A command window opens up here again. And now it's checking to see if everything is somehow installed and basically starting the stream. It's checking through here. A bit more with um, preparing stream. And it works, ladies and gentlemen. It works. Then we'll take a quick look into the news here. Do this. Uh, first set the resolution to 512 and uh, whoops 512 again 
Let's animate the new stuff right away. Uh, oops. A time in seconds. So you see it works. And the colleague here is just interpreting this noise. How you have to deal with it. And uh, well, that works quite splendidly already. We're a bit limited here with the model to a resolution of 512 by 512. Uh, we can briefly stop the noise here or we can slow it down a bit. Uh, let's make it happen. 0.2 is always a pretty good value and uh, the whole thing already works quite wonderfully. So with the slider, you go a bit closer towards the prompt, meaning step by step. These steps, they're basically the, a new adoption, how the AI model reacts to the input, so to speak. In detail, I can't explain it to you either, but experience just shows that um, when I turn the step towards one, it just goes more towards the prompt and not to the live input. If I go towards live input now, it's this mm, You see, it more or less adapts the live input. Um, the second slider also works similarly, essentially. Ah, yes. The more steps you add, the more realistic it becomes. That's my experience. We can stop that one again. Let's just put in five steps now and say start again. Now we have to wait a bit again. That's it. As you can see, the FPS rate drops a bit here. That's simply because he now has many more steps to calculate. Now let's focus on live input meaning camera input. So I'm going to use an NDI camera now because I found that my capture card just doesn't work well with OBS, which is what I'm using to record this. Just like that, having problems with touch designer and OBS at the same time. So I'm going to consult my phone here where I've got the NDI app installed and I can basically include myself here directly from my networker and now check if the source is there. NDI HX camera, that's it. And I'm taking it, that's me here. Let me just stand over here for a moment. And then it would be quite nice if we could rotate ourselves. We take a transform, it's floating around here and we rotate ourselves by 90 degrees. Mm, not 790, but 90 then. Yes, let's leave that and let's input something here. And as you can see, I'm that now with the Diffy Banana ES. Relatively easy. I'll just be brief. Somehow, that was my prompt. And you see, the whole thing works. I'll just create a new layout here. We are making a top viewer. As you can see, you can build that actually fast. And I think uh, it's just totally crazy in my eyes um, what's possible. So you have to consider this is running here at 5 FPS on just 4070. And I have here a live input and can now manipulate everything live in Touch Designer. So with audio reactive parameters and all that jazz, it's just something that is something I couldn't have imagined just two or three years ago. And it responds to me that reacts Yes, as I said, I find it really intense.
We can also manipulate the slab size a bit more here and see what we end up with. And as you can see, my sweater is now getting involved too. I'm subtitled by the OMRO community. It reacts to my head movement. Uh, and that would be me now as beautiful, um, beautiful woman. Uh, let's take a closer look. Yeah, that's just crazy. Let's do something like this. Let's take a look in an emo style way here. I find this so, so fascinating, folks. Yeah, I think you can build pretty cool installations and stuff with it. Um, uh, everything's clear. Yes, um, with that you can build such cool interactive installations. I think I'm going to keep experimenting with it and doing things. But I think it's just madness in my eyes. This is easy, so for me, the touch designer world is flipped upside down right now. And props to simulate where you can get the whole thing from. I just had to make a video about it because I find it so massive and so awesome. Um, yes, there are a few other touch designer people on YouTube who have done a bit more, experimented a bit more. Uh, I just wanted to make a video about how to install it and what possibilities exist in it now. Especially the ability with live input is just incredible. That's just mega crazy to me. And nowadays, you just have to keep up with it. I'm pretty late to the party with AI and stuff and... Uh, but... Um, so I want to stay a bit more on it, and I find it so intense. I just find it so intense. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I'll just hit stop here, and we've got this awesome picture. I've already on another channel. I made a little series with this prompt, um, and you can check out what comes out of it at WhatsFX. As I said, um, I post all my art stuff and such. Got some high resolution here and took some pictures of that uh, and that uploaded as a series. I still find this, as you can tell, I'm thrilled. Yes. Uh, yeah, friends, I'm absolutely thrilled with this tool. I can imagine a lot of cool stuff people do with it. As I said, I'll keep looking into it. I might also do this in a stream sometime and then maybe add something audio reactive um, or something. Um, I just find that so intense, especially the fact that you can get out uh, 11 FPS with a 4070. And I can also imagine that it can be further optimized to somehow reach around 30 FPS. But um, I think a 4070 might be a bit too little for that. But that means um, it's just an extremely cool tool, as I said. I'm absolutely thrilled about it. Um, and if you want to see more content like this, feel free to check it out. I won't just do touch designer stuff. Um, I'll also... Oh, the channel is super broadly laid out. So just keep watching. Subscribe. Um, hit the thumbs up. Um, it definitely helps a small channel like mine in every way uh, very far and yes as said more of that coming soon here and there are other videos uh, i'm out